Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Social Media Weekend, the extended learning edition. As you know, we had Social Media Weekend just this past weekend. We're meeting on the Friday after the Saturday Social Media Weekend, and you all signed up to get extended learning. So not only do you have all the recordings that we've already done from that amazing day, you also have a chance to learn in to learn over the next three months more stuff in this very important time for us to understand where everything is going. I am so happy to see you all uh, participating in our group, posting comments, and I'd love for you to say hello. Where are you watching from right now? And how are you feeling? Use the comment section and let's get you all in, you know, talking to each other. It's four o'clock now, and I'm Sri, because I know we have some people who didn't come last week, but I've bought tickets since, and I appreciate that, definitely. Uh, and I'm a professor of digital innovation, a visiting professor of digital innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism. And the Marshall Loeb Professor is the name of the title that I hold. And that has given me a great responsibility to think about digital innovation in this moment. And that's something that... Uh, I am using these moments of using so our social media weekend, as well as my daily COVID-19 calls to have as big an impact as we can and to see what is the role of media, what is the role of journalism, what is the role of marketing, what is the role of crisis communications, what's the role of PR, all in this unusual, set of turbulent, turbulent times. And uh, how we're going to use this today is I see my friend Michelle is here from LA. Michelle wasn't with us in online last week, but she's going to catch up with everything. And she has a wonderful uh, uh, way of understanding social and digital. And we worked together on my LA speaking tour a couple of years ago, and she has a fab job that I want her to tell us about. And everybody watching also post your Twitter handle, post your Instagram. Let's really get all of you connected. So what's going to happen is that um, we're gonna use the first 20 minutes or so uh, as a way to kind of catch our breath um, at the end of a long week for most of us and to share some ideas, share some tips from what happened uh, last week. And also I'll share things I've learned even since last week. And then we will uh, get ready for the arrival of Soledad who'll be here around 4.30. So about 30 minutes into this video. If you're watching this later, and you want to get right to Soledad, just fast forward to 30 minutes into the video and you will have her there. So what I'm going to first do is to welcome on board our team members from Social Media Weekend, the part of the internal team that did so much of the work. I was lucky to be the face of, of it, but so many of you got to, uh, the people who really did the work, I want you to say hello to them. I'm going to bring them on board here. They will say hello and then we will uh, kind of, watch your comments as you post on your, you know, how you think we did, what are things we can do better. We will have a survey out to you in the next few days. The other thing that people have asked for are the tip sheets and reading material. And we will have that to you tomorrow, both on email and in this group. And don't forget, we also have our LinkedIn group, which is where we want you to go in and comment and talk to each other. You can start your post there. Here you've noticed We've kept this a little bit of a walled garden, even within amongst all of ourselves, so that the posts are really useful for anybody who wants to use it. So we're, we're trying to keep this to be a little more uh, from my team and me talking to you with your comments. But over on this exclusive LinkedIn group, you can go in and start your own posts and things like that. One of the things I noticed is how active it's not on LinkedIn. And that's because we're also used to Facebook, Slack, and other things. I believe LinkedIn has great value to us and even more value in these moment at this moment. And so I want us, including me, to go and spend more time in that LinkedIn group. So uh, with that, let me bring up our team here. Look who's here. We have Andrew Lee, wave. Andrew Lee, who's at Fuzzheado, please follow him. There's Neil Parikh, Neil. Hi. There's Linda Bernstein, our executive producer. Linda, 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 can't believe a week's already <laughs> flown by. I know it's gone by so fast, and uh, the, but the 
the day last Saturday flew by. I think it was Neil who compared it to being the host of a party and it just flies by. And there you said, talked about that you're going to be posting the tip sheets and, and all that. And I started to go back and watch the videos because I didn't get to see everything because I was doing other things. So th this is wonderful. I love the way that it's working. I love the way it worked. And I like that I can have access again to the videos and to the continued conversation. It's terrific. Thank you. And thank you for your hard work. Let's remind people where we were Friday night. All of us were on continuous series of calls or stream yard conversations, trying to do practice with the speakers, bring them in. And we didn't know how all of it was going to go. And then fast forward to the end of Saturday, big relief, but also great pride in what we were able to do. And the team that you see in, uh, in front of you folks, they're the ones along with others who made this all possible. I see great comments coming in. There's Patricia saying hello from Union Square, New York City. And Twitter and Instagram, she's Patricia Kitchen, one word, so you can find her there. Rose said hi to all of you from these crazy times. Mark Lee is watching, uh, and he's giving his Twitter and uh, uh, Instagram. And of course, he's into music because he's Bluesman62 and, and Lee Entertainment62. And uh, he's been also loving, he says, the COVID conversations. Every day I've been doing these, folks. It's my 15th one is over, and I'm just getting started, unfortunately. And I'll tell you more about that. So great comments coming in. Uh, we're just trying to build the momentum uh, till when Soledad comes in here at about 4.30. So in about 20, less than 20 minutes. Uh, let's uh, have uh, Andrew say hello. Andrew, how are you feeling? How do you think it went? Hey, folks. Uh, I think it went great. And we didn't have a lot of time at the end for any Q&A, or it might have been a lot of us were fatigued at the end of the six plus yeah. hours of the day. So with some time and reflection, if you had any questions or follow ups or things that you use from Social Media Weekend that you thought were useful this past week, um, please let us know or ask us any questions. We'll be happy to answer anything now, now that we have a fresh look at things. Uh, as Linda said, I didn't get to see every single minute of the conference because we were busy producing it. So I did go back and watch it. And it was just so nice to be able to absorb it at uh, at your own pace, which is one of the nice things about having them recorded. So that's even kind of a more of an enhancement over the in real life event that you can actually go back and listen at your own pace and try these things out. So uh, if did you try Coda, did you try Slido? Did you try some of these tools out? Let us know and we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions or listen to your reflections on what went well and, and what you recommend. Yeah, Neil, your thoughts? I think uh, uh, it was great. I think that, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, continuing the process, right? We learned as a production team how to put on a conference. Uh, and there's some things we're still refining as we go. But uh, one of the things is that we've heard from a number of people who watched uh, and, and some people who didn't watch, who just heard about it and wanted to learn more. How can I put on a, a live stream conference? What tools can I use? StreamYard is one of those tools, but for some people, Zoom might be better, uh, or even something like Adobe Connect, depending on your circumstance. Uh, so we're hoping that we can help answer those questions, and, and uh, you're in a place, hopefully, of learning a week later, uh, you know, what is your, my question, what was your best takeaway from uh, Social Media Weekend from last week. That's the question that I've posed on the screen. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, we will certainly be happy to answer them. Um, so uh, just a couple other comments. And, and so Doug Levy uh, is sharing that he's been using StreamYard and competing to other, comparing it to other tools that he was already using. Uh, that's great to hear, Doug. This is one of the things that Shri said uh, last week. With this new environment we're in, we need to try new things and 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 learn new tools, expand our uh, skill sets. Um, Vikasha Pota actually is here. Thank you. Um, let's get uh, Vikasha's uh, comment uh, using the free logo site uh, that we heard about, and also playing around with Streamyard. So that's that's great. Um, I can't remember Andrew. What was the logo site that um, we talked Name about in Jeremy's presentation? Name cheap. Name. Namecheap, okay. So it's yeah. a, they're clever, right? They're a domain company. And so they want you to, uh, they give you this free tool that makes a logo. You love the logo, maybe you'll buy a domain with them, right? I Otherwise actually hope to give it to you for free, yeah. 
I my my domain I have is Neil. Uh, my address Neil at neilparek.org. It's actually hosted through Namecheap, and oh. I didn't know that they were a logo company. I guess so it's that's a kind of content marketing, right, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, try to cut through all the dimensions and uh, <laughs> be a full service uh, company. So that's really cool. Um, we'll have to yeah, check out this uh, post that uh, Vikash wrote uh, after the uh, the conference on LinkedIn. So I definitely oh, yeah. for folks on Facebook. Uh, what you can do is if you're watching on your uh, computer, you can right click on that link, open in a new tab and you know, give it a quick like and maybe even share it. Uh, we'll certainly be uh, doing that as well uh, and uh, and looking for that piece. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vikash. And Vikash um, is, you know, he, he, his bread and butter is education, right? That's what he's all about. And I'm sure that all these things he's trying to take in all this information on how to do education in this new climate now. Yeah, I'm going to just show you the uh, the piece that he wrote so that we can also show you the sharing part yeah. of it. And it's called, uh, we'll just take off the uh, yep. Chiron in front of it, but it says VP Notes, VP, VP, I like that, VPN, right? VP Notes, Vikas, Ota <laughs> Notes, and come at the hour, come at the ed tech sector. And that's really, you know, so much is changing. I think this is a, a milestone moment for online education, and he's put in, uh, things that he's watched and listened to that he liked. And then he talked about uh, being social. He, you know, he gave us a shout out, which I loved and very grateful for. And he talks about all the things. In fact, it's a very nice report and we're very grateful. So I'm just going to go in. And uh, what I encourage everybody to do is to like, as, as he said, like the post and uh, make sure you uh, share it with your audience. Uh, so I'm look, look at that. He's got lots of likes already. We're going to celebrate it, not just like it. And then I'm just going to hit share, and I can go like this and share in a post. Uh, great insights from at Vikas Hota. So this this is one of the things uh, Andrew Seaman taught us that you've got to after you write something, you it's good to give some context, and when you post it, then people can can take a look at it. And uh, Vikas is a leader in nonprofits, online education. Uh, startups, all of that, and he's based in London. And we're waking up to the news this morning that Boris Johnson has COVID virus, you know, has COVID nineteen. He's positive. That seems like a lifetime ago. It was only, you know, uh, ten hours ago or so, but it seems an eternity. All right. Um, who else? Uh, we would look forward to more comments. And if you have any friends who were already in social media weekend, don't reach out to people who are not in social media weekend and tell them to just go into the group and see it, all the friends that you have already who are in there. And um, because uh, it says, I paid for tickets but missed it online due to a pet emergency. Where can I get the, the, the recordings? Great question. And I'm gonna let Neil make his pitch for what, what first they need to do before sure. they get a ticket. Sure. So uh, the first thing, if you're in the Facebook group, uh, the, the first thing before you do anything else and uh, the person who is commenting here and also uh, scrolling back up, I think it was uh, Deborah from DC, uh, Deborah Burnick. Um, make sure you go to uh, StreamYard.com slash Facebook and click on one link because we would love to see your name and face when we put your comment on the screen. It doesn't look, when you're in the Facebook group, you can't tell that uh, we can't see you. Uh, it looks normal to you, but when we show your comment on the screen, you see we have a outline for your picture and it just says Facebook user. So uh, go ahead and, and go to that link and just um, uh, click, the, click the link so StreamYard has permission. Um, to getting to, to the specific question, um, you paid for the tickets. That's how you have access to this Facebook group. We actually made this a closed Facebook group and, and uh, Linda worked hard uh, and with Rajni and a few others to make sure that everyone who paid for a ticket got in uh, to, the, to the convention hall, if you will, to put it that way. Um, and then what we did is we streamed all the uh, videos into that Facebook group and we did them in chunks. So we have the opening session and Shree's uh, keynote address. We have Andrew and Stefan's uh, presentation on online collaboration tools, um, the TikTok presentation, Jeremy Kaplan's uh, tools. 
the Nick Kristoff, Cheryl Wudun conversation, so many different um, videos. They're all diff distinct bite-sized pieces, about 45 minutes to an hour each. Uh, so you can actually go in if you're in the group and Shri is actually showing it now. Uh, you can go in and look for the um, uh, the video that you want to watch, all of them, uh, or just uh, one at a time. Now, one of the things that we need to do as, as conference organizers, we need to also make it easier for you. Uh, on our list is actually to put a new post at the very top of the group that has an, a table of contents, effectively, to show here is the link for this video, here's the link for that video. Um, so that's that's on us to do. We will make sure to take care of that as soon as we can. But in the meantime, you can just scroll down and watch all the videos uh, you want to. Um, and that's what Andrew was also typing into the uh, into the uh, Facebook group. Patricia was saying that her uh, uh, best takeaway uh, was that these sessions can be uh, human and engaging. Uh, that so many mem mem webinars are one sided. Um, we can't help of making entertaining. I, I think the big thing with that is is the comments, Shri. When we when we get the comments uh, into a group, and we see this with the New York Times read along on Sunday mornings, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, if uh, folks aren't um, familiar with the time. Um, but that's what makes the, the presentation and the conversation so uh, interactive and rewarding, that we can take a quote, uh, a comment like Patricia's and put it on screen um, you know, we can look at, uh, you know, uh, the thank you from uh, Deborah Ziska um, and, uh, and, and build on the conversation uh, that way. Valerie is saying she's looking forward to reviewing all the videos this weekend. So I guess it's uh, social media weekend <laughs> too for, for her, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, we have a good, good question from Vikasha asking, what thoughts do we have in providing the water cooler moment where you can network and meet delegates. It's the missing link in virtual conferences. Any ideas? Um, yeah. Absolutely, Vikash. One of the things that we we uh, tried to do is to, we, first of all, we focused on delivering great content in a way that you could uh, consume it. Um, I think the water cooler moment comes from interacting with your colleagues who are commenting. So, you know, for example, if you see someone asking a question or making a comment, you can reply to their comment in, in Facebook. And what I like about it is that at, when you're at a conference, if you're sitting next to each someone and you're not tweeting uh, and you're just listening and you hear something great, you can you know, lean to the side and whisper, hey, that was, that was a really great insight. I really like that. With live tweeting or Facebook group comments, you can actually make that comment and, con and, and converse with someone in the back of the room effectively, right? everyone in the room becomes someone you're sitting next to. Um, but I, I, I'm a big fan of, of, the, uh, the, of StreamYard and the way we did it in the Facebook group. I think it worked for a lot of people. Uh, we had some technical challenges, certainly, but I think that uh, all in all, it, it worked uh, pretty well. Um, Shri, should I just keep picking questions to? Yeah, let's No, I'd also like to get Andrew and Linda's thoughts. They both Please. go to a lot of conferences and Andrew, especially with the He's organizing four other conferences at the same time. So what are you doing about this? Vikas has asked this question of me before, and I echo what he, uh, what uh, uh, Neil says, but I'd lo love to hear what you're thinking of uh, in this case. Yeah, there's there's some other options that are out there. You know, probably the best known is like Zoom web webinar does have the ability to have breakouts. So that is a little bit more of an engineered, uh, discrete partitioning of the crowd. So you can actually set up breakout saying, who wants to talk about technology? Who wants to talk about social impact or environmental impact? So you can actually have people kind of self-select to these different rooms. You can have like, let's say 15 minutes for them to talk and chat, and then you kind of reassemble back into the main room. So you actually have some of those functions of some of these platforms, uh, but they are, you know, since people don't use them that often, they might be a little bit intimidated to try them out, but they're there. So be aware of that. And then we also have the full blown summit software where the whole idea is in fact to have this cross pollination of many to many, um, but that is a big learning curve as well. So I think most of these platforms Akash, are struggling with that as well. So that's a great question. Um, they're trying to make it easier to use and provide that function 
um, in a more engineered way. But in terms of the organic water cooler hallway moments, tough, you know, and that's where you just want to have a conversation space. And it's kind of nice with StreamYard being able to kind of merge the Facebook comments with the YouTube, with some Twitter. There's really nothing that quite does it that way right now. So I think we're kind of lucky to have that with StreamYard at least. Yeah. I was thinking, though, that, that um, one thing that I've been seeing it happen after our virtual event last Saturday, and it's interesting, I've been doing this with Sri for lots of years, and it happens after the in-person ones, too, is that people start following each other, and they start having Facebook conversations, they start having Twitter conversations, there are a lot of ways to have conversations now. And so some of those water cooler conversations are really like water cooler conversations because they're taking place later on, the, the morning after, the two days after, and they're taking place on a... And I think that that's cool too, that we are connecting. Yeah, uh, amazing. So let me just qu quickly go through the questions because Soledad's going to arrive shortly. Uh, Vicky says, how is it different uh, to use StreamYard to live to virtual event with hosts in two different countries? As you know, we happen to be in four different parts of America. It doesn't matter, really. Um, as long as you have connection to the internet and strong connectivity. In fact, Andrew has forced me to go out and buy a, a line connection. Uh, physical wire that I'm going to connect instead of just using Wi-Fi when I do these shows because they're mission critical. Um, apart from that, there's you can be anywhere in the world to do it. So it's all about the connectivity. And Vikas says, great responses. Thank you. Um, there's also a question here I saw from Suman. She said, how does Google Hangouts compare? And there are so many things that we can compare these two, and they're all good for their own things. And if you go back and watch Andrew's presentation with Stefan, you'll see her, they discuss various tools in the one-to-many, many-to-many, and other ways of looking at them. To me, the shorthand is that uh, the office experience that people are experiencing getting now through Zoom is very good for what it does. But what we're doing is more like television, but better than regular television, because when done right, it's TV that you can actually interact with. Your questions are going up. You're you're gonna see now when you talk when we talk to Soledad, you're gonna get that feeling that your your questions mattered, your opinion mattered when you're watching Soledad and the way our team produces it. We have, in fact, in this whole week, I've been uh, talking to my existing clients and helping them think about these tools, and then others have been calling me and saying we want help uh, to take our uh, event and make it online. So please get in touch. We can help you. We can advise you. One, we just sold a project to a major university in the Northeast United States uh, just today. And uh, all of it is to, to say at this moment, the people who have the digital skills, the social media, mobile skills, understanding strategy discussions, they can benefit. They can stand out in the crowd. And that's where we want you all to up your learning as much as you can. I also want to tell you that we have weekly learning opportunities beyond everything we're doing. And one of them is the group office hours. Every Wednesday till June, or probably as long as I'm in lockdown, or we will be coming to you at 5 p.m. Eastern, and it'll all be recorded. And there are really good notes being taken. You can see the first one is already in our Facebook group. I'll show it to you here in a second. Um, by the way, I should tell you that in our virtual green room, Soledad O'Brien is already here. I'm so jazzed about it. Uh, but we'll just give her a minute to relax and we'll bring her on in a couple of minutes. But I will show you how we're doing these um, group uh, opportunities for the group office hours so that you can go in and, and see the notes and the comments and what people have posted. We we learned to use this tool called um, uh, the this tool called Coda that was mentioned by Jeremy and we decided that it's important to try that so I'm just going to click in here so you can see what that looks like and I will need to share that screen um, just one second so you can see what the notes that come out of a session like that uh, can look like so we call those the group office hours. And these are all the things that we did and we talked about from your own colleagues, the people who attended, including a home video setup, 
and what you can do, tools to explore. Marilyn Zafer doing amazing things with her community uh, map out on Staten Island. Uh, she was a rock star during everything that happened with her Superstorm Stan, San, Super Sandy, but she now is uh, helping everybody with what's happening with the COVID-19. So uh, we want this to be a continuous learning opportunity for you. And we believe that you will benefit in incredibly from just being part of this group, sharing comments here, joining us here every Wednesday, but don't forget that LinkedIn group. That's where you can start your own comments, post, share, et cetera. And we have our giant Facebook group, as you know, 9,000 people, including folks who work at Twitter, at LinkedIn, at YouTube, et cetera, the CEO Foursquare, major editors from major publications. You go in there, post a comment, somebody will help you. We are a learning community at a time when learning is more important than ever. And uh, I wanna give each of my panelists here a chance just to give us a final thought as we get set to bring on Soledad. So Linda, our executive producer, we wanna go first? Well, I think it's interesting you said this is an amazing, what we have learned about online learning in the past two weeks, I think is more than we've ever known about online learning. And there's, and it's also really heartening to me how so many institutions like Lincoln Center and the American Museum of Natural History, how they're all jumping on board and offering stuff for like preschoolers, you know, through, as well as adults, as well as college students. So there's so much online now and that's so important to help us through those of us who are feeling isolated. So it's terrific. Thank you, Sri. And thank you for all your leadership and bringing us together and having the faith that we could take a big conference and turn it around, make it online only in 10 days. Uh, we turned out to be the first out of the gate out of New York. And we're very proud of that. And we contributed to so many people learning. And by the way, Linda, I hate to tell you this, but Amy, one of our attendees said, I love it so much. I'm ready to pay. When is the next session? So, uh, <laughs> the, the day. so uh, we were not going to quite get started on that yet, but we're very excited. Thank you, Linda. Let's go to Andrew. Uh, yeah, no, just thanks everyone for making it such a success. It wouldn't be a success without folks uh, with smart, incisive comments and interacting with us and, and, uh, you know, leading the program through to what you folks are interested in. And as Sri said, we're kind of leading the pack. I think we might've mentioned this during the conference that all these conferences in real life had to cancel. And we were kind of at the front of the line of folks who said, we got to do it online and 10 days from now it's going to happen. And we actually did it. And it's thanks to you folks who kept uh, your faith in what we're doing and hopefully you found it super useful. And we'd love to do it again, but with a little rest before, between. Before that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Andrew. And folks, please follow at Wordwhacker, that's Linda, and follow Andrew at Fuzzheado. Let's go to Neil and then Soledad O'Brien. Wow. Uh, I'm the one keeping you from Soledad O'Brien. That's not an enviable <laughs> place to be in, Sheree. Thank you. Uh -huh. I, did, I, I did have a chance to share a lot of thoughts earlier, so I really don't have anything else to add except to highlight my own comment on the screen because I can do that, um, taking my phone out and also putting that up. Um, you know, we are gonna be, there are a lot of questions about StreamYard. Again, it's not the only tool out there. Um, depending on your circumstance, it may not be the right one for you, depending on, uh, you know, what kind of event you wanna put on. But we have some uh, expertise around StreamYard. I've been using it for three to four months. Andrew's been using it for a lot of Wikipedia related uh, events. Uh, obviously, and Sri has been using it for his uh, COVID-19 calls in the last two weeks. He's uh, learned on the job daily. <laughs> He's probably done as many shows as I've done now because I do them weekly. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, there is a lot we can learn, a lot we can uh, learn together. Uh, we will do one of the office hours. We'll, Let's do we'll next weekend. Tomorrow. I think there's next Wednesday. Let's do it if you're free. Next week, next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. It'll be recorded, so people can catch up later. Next next Wednesday, Shri says. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll check my calendar later and, and <laughs> tell United Way that I'm busy, uh, yeah, like exactly. I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> don't don't tell my people though, please. Okay. This is a closed Facebook group. Remember. Oh um, yeah, everything on the internet is stays where it should be. What happens in the closed SM Weekend Facebook group stays in the closed F uh, Facebook group. 
Um, but seriously, we'll do office hours. But if you do want to reach out, if you have questions, uh, my information is on the screen. You can follow me at Neil Parikh on Twitter or Instagram, uh, or send me an email, neil at neilparikh.org. Try and keep it simple for folks. Um, and uh, we're always happy to help. That's what really uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, with that, Shri, uh, get rid of us and yes, uh, bring on the, the, the guest. Uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to hearing Soledad. Uh, so please uh, end this. All right. <laughs> bye bye, guys. And let's get ready. And let's uh, just have Soledad O'Brien join us. Uh, uh, Soledad is someone I have watched for a long time, but gotten to know over the last few years. She is so wonderful in the way she not just has used television, but also social and digital. So let me bring her on here because she's been waiting patiently. And there Not she is. Hi, Solid. Hi. How nice are you? Nice to see you. I'm great. I'm going to turn this a little bit this way to get better light. How's it? Yes. That? And uh, tell us where you are right now. I'm in my bedroom, which is the <laughs> quietest part of the house because I have four kids. So I'm really just trying to make sure that someone doesn't burst in the door <laughs> asking when's dinner or when's snack or when's whatever. Uh, but it's actually been a really nice day, a sunny day. We've had so much rain, and uh, and I think that's helped the kids not lose their minds. And you, you've gone, I presume, like all of us, from one conference call to another conference call to a podcast recording to something else. So let's get that podcast in so everybody knows to find it. Absolutely, yeah. And plus, I feel like I've got my PhD in Zoom and in <laughs> every single online connection, which is great, actually. You know, it's interesting. I was listening in on your conversation, and one of my sons is uh, is deaf. And I remember when he was, he was diagnosed when he was about seven years old. And the effort to get a school, a very good school, to embrace figuring out digital in a way that this kid who couldn't really keep up with his classmates, I mean, for some really simple stuff, just email us the links that he's gonna look at tomorrow, right? So he gets them ahead of time because he can't hear them well enough to hear it the first time. And it was interesting to see now that all of us are figuring out all of this, you know, connection digitally when I just remember hitting my head against a wall previously to try to help this seven-year-old keep up with his classmates. And I, I feel like we've really come a long way because we've been forced to. Yeah, it's true. Uh, by the way, I just want to read you some of the comments. Carla's watching from New Jersey. She says, hi. Michelle's watching in LA. Uh, Twyla says, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Jamie pleasure. watching from Dutchess County. Uh, you know, we lost a lot of the people who would have been here uh, because they're in Asia, because they're already asleep. But we've got uh, it's a different time opportunity for us. But everyone will get to see this in the recording. So it's great. I just want to also just share this message from Deborah, who says, the American Alliance of Museums just canceled their annual conference, the largest annual museum gathering in the world, uh, scheduled for May 17th. And they need to go digital. Let us know, Deborah. We're here to help you. Just get in touch, 3 at 3.net, and we can talk. But uh, everybody's trying different things. Michelle says we used Be Live last night. I'm interested mm -hmm. to see how StreamYard compares. And I would love to talk to you, Soledad, later uh, offline about uh, some of the other tools we've been playing with that you might like to check out in, sure. in, in, in what we're doing. Uh, Maria is here. New Jersey is in the house. Clearly, you are big in New Jersey, which is cool. Uh, what they say, uh, Soledad, everything's legal in New Jersey. That's what Hamilton yes, says, of course, right? of course. <laughs> One of my favorite lines from the show. Uh, Lambert says, I missed Soledad on CNN. Glad to meet her here Thank again. You, so, Thank you, Lambert. Uh, you, you know, our keynote speakers deserve a, 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 a richer introduction. So if you will bear with me, I do want to uh, read the proper introduction. Uh, Soledad is an award-winning journalist, documentarian, news anchor, and producer. At the forefront of the biggest news stories of the past two decades, O'Brien is one of the most sought-after journalists and on-camera personalities today. She created Black in America. Applause, applause, applause. Great <laughs> show series. Latino in America. By the way, my kids taught me that, that instead of applauding, you do that. And this is for hearing impaired. Oh, this nice. Is hearing, nice. Which I love. I love <laughs> that. that is this is amazing. <laughs> right, that's uh, that's uh, great. Uh, that uh, and now and now, now hosts the syndicated Hearst TV news program, Matter of Fact, distributed by Sony Pictures, and she reports for HBO Real Sports with Brian Gumble and the PBS News. Nominated Hour. for uh, Emmy uh, yesterday. I mean, yeah. overall, HBO Sports yeah. I think nominated for sixteen, but um, wow. one of our pieces was nominated, so I'm very thrilled about that. Look at Not this. Sure. Diane says, "Sorry, sorry, what'd you say?" 
I said, I'm not sure when the Emmys will actually happen because right. you have that emoji, right? Like this, you don't yep. know anything. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, Diane said, huge fan of Soledad. Thank you for spending uh, time with us. And uh, Doug has been a fan. Uh, going back to your earliest days on MSNBC. I, mean, I know Doug because uh, that would make me old, Doug. So what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the work yes, just didn't stand did out. The site in 96 yeah. uh, was the show that we did, which was kind of crazy. When I, you know, that show was done over um, a modem and it took us eight hours to shoot a one hour show. Wow. And here we are in real time. Everything to download. Yeah, and here we are in real time. That's great. Uh, yeah. And Maria says she loves your Finding Your Roots episode. I love that fun. I'm not sure my Australian relatives were so excited because it was a lot about the criminal on my dad's side of the family. And, you know, uh, <laughs> and Michelle says she loved your documentary. So uh, we've got that part out of the way, but we want to give people some context. I first wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the podcast and the series you're doing now. And then we'll have some specific questions and comments coming to you. Perfect. Great. So you'll, you'll tell us about the podcast first? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Because I, I, for a minute, I just, you just cut out. So now, yes, I hear you fully. Yeah, we're doing, um, we've got a couple of different podcasts happening. It's such an interesting time, right? I mean, at the end of the day, um, now is the time to think about how you communicate with people differently. And so, for example, even for our projects that we're working on, we have a number of clients coming back to us saying, what can you do now? What can you deliver now to us? And so it's been a really interesting time for me to think about how do you create content podcasts? You don't need much to really think about the kind of podcast you're going to do. So we're doing um, a couple of different podcasts. One's going to be a, uh, a political podcast uh, that really looks at stories around political news. I, I find this one's to the left and this one to the right is not so interesting for me. I'm much more interested in the whys and the hows of how information is delivered. And sometimes people who are on either side uh, think strategically about how they deliver information to us. So that's the kind of podcast that we're going to be working on. We're also working on a, a podcast called Murder on the Towpath that looks at a murder in the 1960s. Um, and two women who never met, but were both uh, in the Georgetown area, whose lives intersected. One was the woman who was murdered, a wealthy woman. Uh, the other was a black woman who uh, defends the black guy who's accused of killing uh, the white woman who's murdered. And that has been a fascinating dive into history. Weirder because we've walked along the towpath and it's the most open, you know, it's just a, it's an open path. I mean, I thought it would be hidden and behind under, you know, under, trees or something where you know someone would want to commit a murder but it's actually pretty much in broad daylight uh, so that's been an interesting podcast to work on as well but i've really liked the platform one reason i said yes to doing podcasts is i just really wanted to explore the, the the platform and how you communicate something different to people thank you and i just want to show you some of the comments hello from taiwan right at the moment so this is somebody who's awake either super early Peggy. or Go back to bed. <laughs> and by the way, you've launched an argument about who's older uh, on this because different people are admitting that they're older than others. I and am Mark 23, so I think I win. <laughs> Mark says, I lie and say I'm 23. So. You look it. So that's great. <laughs> that's the right answer. My parents founded a radio station in the 70s in oh, wow. Warrington, North Carolina. So I'm old school media person as well. Oh, wow. Well, well. Yeah. Laura says, excited to hear how social, uh, how I social from Soledad and Maria as well. And uh, this is just so nice to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, so can you reflect a little bit, uh, as you know, we had Nick Kristoff and Cheryl Wudun join us last weekend. And uh, we were gonna talk only about social, but they reflected on this moment in America and in the world. And I'd love to hear just your thoughts on how things, how you're feeling, how you're doing and where do you think this all goes? Uh, give us some wisdom, please. Yeah, it's an interesting time. And I think your last panel was right. right? What stays technology-wise? What do we learn? Uh, the idea that everybody's now dumping a lot of their content online or saying maybe we could all meet virtually. Like, we don't have to cancel this. Is there a way that we can bring people into this conversation? I do hope that that's going to change how we think about access for everybody when this all goes back to normal. 
I'm doing fine. I'm up in uh, in my house, uh, which is about 90 minutes north of New York City. And um, that's been nice because the kids have a backyard to run around in. Um, and basically everybody's fine, thank God, and knock on wood, healthy. Uh, the weather, you know, everybody's in an, a an bad mood when it's raining and in a good mood when it's a little bit sunny out. But otherwise, I think it's churning along fine. My day is a typical work day. We're trying to keep everyone in the office working. Our goal is to get through this. And I have a small company, um, a production company called Soledad O'Brien Productions. We have 11 employees. And our goal is to keep everybody working on projects, even as some of our clients are in chaos and trying to figure out what they're going to do. So in some ways, there have been big opportunities. You know, um, For example, what you have on the screen now is Hungry to Learn as a doc that actually tomorrow is going to be at a film festival. It's supposed to be uh, at a film festival. And, um, and instead, they're doing a virtual film festival. Uh, so I hope folks will have a chance um, to, uh, to check out our documentary, which looks at four college students who are hungry who are, are um, food insecure on campus. So we're in the middle of a couple of doc projects. We're shooting a documentary right now in Seattle about COVID-19 and what they're doing, really the first hot spot in the country. And also have a bunch of other projects, uh, some of which have been put on hold while everybody tries to figure out, well, how do you shoot a story while you can't get closer than six feet from somebody? So, um, so you know, on, on one hand, it's 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 been a lot and a challenge because just from a business perspective, how do we make sure, you know, my goal is that everybody gets a paycheck every week. Uh, and also, how do we make sure that um, we're emotionally taking care of people? Um, and that, you know, I think it's a, obviously a very stressful time and uh, and it's it's nice to have routines. So the way I deal with it is I, I like routine. I'm a routine person. I make lists. I check off boxes. I... That's what I do. And so we have morning calls and afternoon calls and check-ins and workouts and meal plans and all that stuff. And that's helpful for me. Uh, my husband is kind of set up in a room where he can do his work. Uh, the kids are doing online school, so they're doing their work. I've stolen my son's laptop to do this um, <laughs> conversation, which was he was the one he kept seeing in the shot as he was helping me set it up. Um, and, and we shoot our show, uh, matter of fact, from this room too. We kind of turn it a little bit. Uh, and uh, my sons are my camera people, uh, but trying to keep our folks who are shooting that show also on the payroll, getting them to be doing work as well. So it's a it's a juggle. It's a stressful time. Uh, Lambert says quite interesting point about accessing post in you know post COVID nineteen. Uh, another one of our guests says that your session during Comnet was a was a highlight. Shout out to Andy Sherry and Sean Gibbons, and uh, uh, one of our viewers says I enjoyed Soledad's anchoring on CNN when I was in med school in New Orleans, Tulane. Then later during residency at Duke, she got me through tough yeah, times. Yeah, wow. Katrina, that was a tough time. I'm sure that's what she's talking about. I spent a lot of time. We were kind of camped out in New Orleans for Katrina. It's weird though. I, I I don't miss doing daily news right now. I think it's a really, it's not a good time. It's not a good time. Um, there's a lot that I see that I'm embarrassed by. There's a lot that's good, but there's a lot that I see that I think is bad. And a good example would be, do you take these daily pressers when you know they're full of misinformation. That's kind of the latest conversation. And so that's been a bit of a, an interesting debate. And I'm glad I don't need to be part of that discussion, you know, for my own show as an anchor. On one hand, you know, the ratings will be high, but on the other hand, you know, you're going to spend the next 30 minutes sort of going through and saying, well, this was not true and this was not true and this was not true. So I'm glad I don't have to do that debate. So let's uh, draw the curtain a little bit behind, draw the curtain in onto the Soledad O'Brien business, uh, the incorporated company there, uh, to say, first of all, thank you for thinking of your employees in such a wonderful manner. We're thinking of all small businesses and medium businesses and corporations right now. I think this is the chance you see who are the ones who really care about workers and who just say it in good times. So thank Crazy you. Times. I just want to point out that this picture of me is when I have a hair and makeup team, and this <laughs> is when I don't. <laughs> What about teaching your sons how to do it? They you know what? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that they won't go for that. Uh, my daughter might, but uh, she likes to sleep until about noon. So probably that'll never work out. I really should have figured it out myself by now. Uh, one, of our, one of our viewers says, I'm all about structures, structure too, lists, calendars, et cetera. So back to the question about your business, we're looking right now at doc series, branded, and then you're being available as a speaker presenter, host, et cetera. Walk us through that. How did you set that up? Sure. And for those of us who don't have your profile, how can we be thinking about our own content work 
what are opportunities out there? We want to really help as many people as possible. So that's yeah, it. absolutely. I think first and foremost, I thought about it as multiple verticals. Some were just talent verticals. There's a project, somebody needs me to be the anchor or the host of that project. And it was kind of fun because I got to just say, would I want to work with these folks or not? And that I think is an incredible luxury when you're self-employed to just be like, this is how I make my decision. Would it be fun? And do I like you? Do I want to work with you? And if the answer is yes, I say yes. Um, I also am a journalist and I wanted to make sure that I kept my finger in the work of journalism. So the show that we do, Matter of Fact, we also uh, produce that show and help uh, we produce it from New York, the, the, the team produces from DC. And then we also do uh, create a lot of content for that show. So we're producers as well of that content, which was very important for me to make sure that I continued to do journalism projects. And then we started getting into docs and docu-series. Some of those docs are straight docs, that kind that I used to do when I was at CNN, and some now that we're working on uh, for HBO and others, uh, uh, Discovery, we're, we're, we're doing docs that look at um, multi-part series docs. Everybody now is looking for like the binge watch. And it's been fascinating to be able to tell stories in a bit of a different way um, over, you know, five, six, seven, eight hours uh, has pretty fascinating. And then of course we continue to have a, a doc business and all of these things are a little bit of Venn diagrams. They overlap a little bit. Some of the docs are journalistic, some are not as journalistic. Um, so we continue to do our doc business. And right now, you know, we, we're putting a lot of that content online, making sure that people have access to it if they don't want to follow um, coronavirus updates day in and day out. And in fact, they want to put their kids in front of something else. We're happy to make sure that they have access to some interesting content. Uh, and then, yeah, we definitely do some speaking, mostly to support some of the other projects we do. So whenever there's a doc, we make sure that we're going around the country talking about that doc and supporting that doc. You know, my job now is to not only create the doc, but also make sure you have a sales tool for selling that doc somewhere. And it's very interesting. If you have a funder, you need to think about, well, what's the platform? Um, where should it live? Who, who, do, who do we need to see this doc? How many eyeballs? And are they the right kind of eyeballs? Um, for example, Hungry to Learn is a doc that I'm not sure that I'd want to put behind a paywall because it's about people who are hungry and don't have money not to eat and not to pay for college. So we really um, wanted a platform where people would have access to it, colleges especially would have access to it and they could use the information as a platform, as a jumping off point um, for what they're doing with their students or what they're doing in their community. Uh, so it's been great. It's, I think, the first year for me. We're now on year seven. The first year was really rough because I'd never really created a budget. I'd never really run um, a, a, a budget. And um, and when it's your own money, uh, you suddenly get very, very interested in mistakes and errors and overruns and just how much things cost and how long they're going to take. So it's been a very valuable lesson. I wish I'd taken accounting classes. But I think anybody, I, I definitely had a a name and that helped open a lot of doors and I had a fair amount of money. I mean, I left CNN with a chunk of money saved and I was able to immediately um, get space in two floors of an office building in New York City. You know, that's that that just takes a lot of upfront cash to do. Uh, so I think that really helped me a lot. But in terms of the, the content, you know, I think for a lot of people just being able to do the work and being really creative and trying to figure out where the conversation is moving um, and taking advantage of opportunities. I mean, it sounds so crazy, but right now there are people who are trying to figure out how you're going to think about content, right? I mean, you now have put your, your, your conversation online. Um, I'm sure there are a whole handful of people who are like, nope, can't do it. And they just stop being helpful. <laughs> you know, those people need to go away in a crisis. And now you need to say like, well, this is what we need to do. We need to figure it out. And I think crises are very useful if that's the appropriate word for trying to figure out a new way to do something successfully. Yeah, that's very well put. Folks, we're taking your questions for Soledad, so please jump in here and post your comments. And the guy uh, driving around with a backhoe. Can you hear him? Would you like me to close my window? No, we can't. I can't oh. hear him. So oh, it's okay. okay. And that's part that. of there is no guy driving around with a backhoe <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things that I, I want to think about is I've been thinking about is that uh, you remember the BBC interview and the kid running in and that was like hilarious. Yeah, now it happens to me three times a, a day where somebody either deliberately brings their kid in or their spouse or whatever. 
and it just adds a human touch. So it's like we've a lot of the facade of television and media and some of the formalities is is, is disappearing. And I just think it's great, right? I mean, I feel like I I now am seeing my colleagues in their kitchens, right? I mean, and we now do a thing where we talk about. Well, where are you? Tell me about your workspace. What do you love about it? What do you? I mean, some people need to have the plant. They need a workspace that looks like a workspace. Some people are fine to be. You can see their bed. They're in bed and they're basically <laughs> with a shirt on, but they're under their covers. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I I do think it's made me um, really much more sympathetic to how people are feeling and doing. You know, we really start our day talking about like how's everybody holding up. How are you know we we don't at work when when. It, when we're in normal circumstances, people come in, 10 o'clock meeting, we just dig in. Um, now that we're doing a, a daily phone call, same time, 10 o'clock, but it's much more of a, a check-in. How are you doing? How's everything? Were you able to find toilet paper? <laughs> you know, how's it going? Are you stressed? What's happening? And I think that's been, um, that's been a nice difference, actually, and I, I hope we keep that. Thank you. I'd like to just walk through your Twitter feed because you're amazing on Twitter. And this is an audience that wants to learn how to do it better. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there are some things that you do that may be appropriate for some people. And a and lot that they should not do. A lot. Okay. So what a we're going to do is I'm going to just, think, sorry, I'm just going to step off so that you can have the screen and I'll just scroll. And then you just tell us what some of the in interesting things were, including your pinned tweet, which is so good. And, and oh, relevant. Yeah. Maybe we'll start with that. Um, so that pin tweet uh, talks about my mom when she died. I found this little letter you can see on the left side of her photo. Um, and she's calling out the town supervisor. Um, it's, it's so my mom. Let this ad convey to you and the people of Smithtown Township the disgust and the frustration felt by this member of the Negro community at your refusal to enact an open housing ordinance. This was a big issue when my parents were looking for a, a house in um, in Long Island uh, in the 1960s when they moved to Long Island. My, my dad was a professor at SUNY Stony Brook. They, um, they, my mom, every time she went with my dad to try to look at a, a property, um, they, no one would let them buy it. So um, so she was, she was always fighting for fair housing because there are, as you know, a lot of tricks in order to keep minorities out of, out of public housing, but sometimes out of any housing. Um, a town like Levittown in Long Island, you know, was a great place to grow up you couldn't live there if you were not the right color. And so I think every time I read that, that's so my mom, which is why I love having it pinned, but also I think I took a lot of that, like um, she just wasn't full of a lot of BS, that lady, you know, she just was tough and, and she wasn't afraid. You know, I, I say in that note, like don't live afraid. You should speak up for the things that matter. She passed away um, in March of, uh, March, so a few days ago, um, last year, and uh, so the one year anniversary about a, about a week ago. And, um, you know, and it really taught me, like at some point it all just ends. So make sure that what you've done and accomplished is, is what you're proud of and what you wanted to do. You know, this idea of like, of living afraid because you're too worried, I, really watching her, her life unfold and then come to an end. I think she was really proud of the things that she fought for. So I do, I love that. And it's fun to be, whenever I open Twitter, I get to see that picture of my mom, which is such a great picture of her. Oh, uh, it really, you know, really captures her. Um, my Twitter feed is aggressive. I'm, I think I like to call bullshit on things that are bullshitty. And I also am very, um, I'm on Twitter a lot. Lately I haven't been because it's mostly politics. And I, I think that's a lot. I also try to, uh, retweet a lot of things that I think are, are uh, good information that people should be reading. And then I try to um, every so often bring out the things that crack me up or the things that make me happy or the things that really impress me or make me feel good about the work that uh, that I'm doing. I mean, this is um, so Andrew, who does K-File for CNN, who's a great guy and a great, great journalist. You know, this is something I've been noticing. Lots of pictures. I haven't actually seen this in person where I live. But like, what is what do you not understand about social distancing? Uh, it really bums me out because it just, you know, the issue is never going to be, um, I think, for for my age and people like me, uh, although there certainly have been increasing numbers of cases of people who seem to be healthy and younger and not have underlying issues. But it really is about, you know, are you are you somehow infecting someone's 80 year old grandmother? I mean, it's just it's so terrible. It, so I, it, that, those pictures just really bum me out. 
I try to weigh in on what's happening politically. I try to weigh in on what's happening uh, in day-to-day news. I'm very opinionated. I call people out when I'm mad at them. Um, I figure that's a good use of my Twitter. And <laughs> uh, and I'm yes, and I'm also a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority. So if people don't know um, what Delta, the Delta, who the Deltas are, the Deltas are hilarious and also the hardest working women you'll ever meet. They're hilarious because at five o'clock in the morning, you know, I usually jump in on a morning flight and I'll be in line and someone will be like, Woo-hoo, soror. <laughs> it's a women's sorority, a black women's sorority and um, really focused on making a difference and helping people. Yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. But they are the most energetic women I've ever met. In this, you know, they just get stuff done. So uh, I love the Deltas and I'm impressed by all the Deltas. So it's it's so nice to uh, to be, a, I'm an honorary Delta. Um, so I'm, it's a really nice group to, to be in that company. And and so I would say, you know, for Twitter, for me, it's part of being in the conversation, but you also, for me, I use my real name. I don't, um, I don't hide behind a, a fake name or a fake avatar or anything. I mean, if you look at this guy's, um, Rob Davidson talking about the ER because he's completely contradicting some of what we're seeing in some of these daily press briefings now, which is insane. I mean, I think people really don't know what the real information is. And so it's been very, uh, I think, helpful to have, again, taking people, regular guys, an ER doc, and just elevating his story uh, and his platform. My, my brother is working in the ER. He's a doctor in San Diego, and he's just really nervous, pretty convinced he's going to get sick because it's just so consistent look at this math i love the I, I, you called out this math uh tweet right he says six hundred thousand volunteers is 10 percent of the population of 66 million people so i'm not good at math i will give you that so whenever i ever talk about math i literally before i would say it out loud i check it and i check it again and then i send it to someone else to check it so i just never would go on the air with a math problem like off the top of my head, I can't do it. So I'm always uh, amazed. So Jay Rosen, he's a great person to follow if you're interested in journalism. He's really great. And he's much nicer than I am. So he's much, I, I will just I will just say the the mean, tough thing. And Jay always frames it very, very nicely. Uh, Adam Serwer is amazing. He's a great, oh, I mean, stellar. Um, uh, Ronald Brownstein is fantastic to follow. I actually, one, I think the best thing about my Twitter feed is I, I follow a lot of people, and so I cherry pick the ones that I want to elevate. And I think my feed is pretty interesting. It's very um, diverse and just very, very interesting. If you want to get a good take on maybe the kinds of stuff that people wouldn't, that you wouldn't get if you just sort of follow one person or you're looking. My husband follows news organizations. I mean, he's so boring, and he doesn't <laughs> tweet, which is probably a good thing. Um, I don't do that. I want to talk to real people, and I want to elevate kind of their point of view if I think it's interesting. Uh, Let's just read some of these tweets here. Uh, Maria says, I find Twitter to be a godsend during this Corona time, right? We always said it was full of problems, which it is, but it's also so good. I've made so many good friends on Twitter. There's one woman in Boston. We have a um, a workout bet every day that we work out, which has been interesting. Um, They're just people I like to check in with on Twitter who I don't know them or I end up meeting them at some point. So yeah, I'm with um, Maria. I, I really enjoy Twitter. Uh, that's great. And we also had a comment earlier. Oh, yeah. Do you use Twitter lists, Soledad, from Tim Sohn? By the way, terrific social media uh, consultant out in uh, Northeast Pennsylvania. He just told us that they're sheltering in place now. That order has come in. And uh, so go ahead, please. Yeah. No, I don't use a lot of Twitter lists, I would say. Um, I, I Sometimes I think there's just too much coming at you. So, no, I don't. Okay, that's uh, that's fair. And uh, let me just uh, also say, uh, uh, she's saying what? Who are the, some of the people you follow? So you gave a shout out to Jay Rosen, and you did. Yeah, to, and, yeah. uh, you said Andy Server, right? A- Adam Server, Andy Server. Adam Server. Yeah, Adam. Adam but, Andy Server is another guy who's also great, and yeah. we worked together ten years ago. Um, yes, uh, Mark is right. Carl Kenny, Mark Anthony Neal. And um, there's, I mean, honestly, I, I'd say just if you peruse my, you're trying to figure out who to follow. There's, it's just a very random gathering of people. Um, Rex Chapman, who I, I didn't realize that Rex was a, an NFL, ex-NFL player. <laughs> yes. And his videos are, and I know he, he sort of grabs them from all over the internet, but he's just amazing. And he's, he's really interesting. So, um, so we've become friendly online too. And, uh, 
uh, you know, he's another one who I'd suggest to follow. There's just a lot of really great, there's great lawyer, you know, so somebody who just has a great perspective as a lawyer or uh, there's a bunch of women in national security who talk a lot about national security. Mima Roca is amazing, um, just very thoughtful in her analysis that you can get on, on Twitter. So there's lots of good people. And and I would say I have a, um, a bunch uh, who I follow. So if you're interested in finding kind of new people and new voices, you definitely should check out my feed. Uh, Roland Martin, I love. We worked together years ago. And he, he has a show. I mean, talk about a guy that's so tech savvy about how he's, hey, he's had his office set up for a, um, a news show forever. He's been doing an online show with millions of people uh, for a long time. So for coronavirus was, did not put a blip in anything that he was doing because he's been doing this on his own for a long time. Uh, let, folks, we have about 15 minutes or so left with Soledad. Please post your comments. We'll, we'll surface them. She mentioned women to follow, and I just want to use this as a chance to plug my daily COVID-19 call sessions. Uh, our next one, next, I'm going to get, give you the dates of the next two. Saturday is uh, a Women to Follow edition, hashtag Women to Follow. And uh, Rose Horowitz is co-hosting that with me. So I'm super excited at Rose Horowitz 31. She's in the group right now. And so 4 p.m. Eastern, we're going to do Women to Follow. And then Sunday at 9 p.m., we're going to do Positivity edition. And uh, every Sunday night, that's the plan. Every Monday, I love that. We talk about, sorry, that I love that. Yeah, thank you. So every Sunday, we're going to talk about uh, positivity. Every Monday noonish, we're going to talk about economic hardship, which we must. But we're going to try and be positive on Sunday nights. But this Saturday at 4 p.m., please join us Eastern time. Uh, Rose has got some fabulous women lined up to be on our show to talk about. Uh, COVID crisis and everything that's going on, and it's called Women to Follow. So please also check her out. Check out her hashtag, Women to Follow, because we must all follow more women. I, I'm noticing on the screen here that uh, as you were talking about, gener you know, you were talking about your sorority. There's the fellow sorority person. You happen to have retweeted her uh, some time ago, and uh, there she is, Jennifer Golson, a former student of mine. Go Columbia! Uh, just Every really happy to. Uh, see this community that's grown up, uh, that's that's come together here. And J Jamie says, love, hashtag women to follow and love Rose. And uh, Rose is emphasizing tomorrow at 4 p.m. I hope you will all join. And uh, Linda is asking, can someone make a Twitter list of people Ms. <laughs> O'Brien follows? And, so uh, I follow 400,000 people. So you definitely don't want that Twitter list of people I follow. You'll lose your mind. But I, I do think if you just... If you just jump into my feed, there are many really, really uh, interesting women, um, but interesting people. And again, in very different categories, you know, some are um, are journalists. There's lots of great female journalists that I love to follow and some I really yell at sometimes. And also um, just regular folks who have an expertise in their particular line of work who I find really, really um, revealing and interesting. So I would just say jump in. I'm not sure you want a 446,000. No, no. See, that's not good. <laughs> but just pop into my 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 Twitter feed and really see kind of what we're doing. And I think then, you know, then if it if it spurs you in that moment and you find it interesting, then then you're interested and go follow that person. Well, that's great. And everybody who's watching right now, tag Soledad O'Brien in your tweets and use SMWKND. We love to see those tweets get out there and uh, more people should be following Soledad. She already has a million people following her, which is awesome. Yeah. And, and I want to talk, you know, we we started at that pin tweet, but let's go to the top there. Tell me about this moment. Do you remember when you took this photograph? Uh, yeah, we took it a couple of years ago. And so obviously every woman who's watching this knows you don't walk in those shoes. Those are what we call limo shoes, which is you never ever actually walk in them at all. And you could see the bottoms are not really scuffed because you can't walk in them. Those are four inch heels. So I just want everyone to know, obviously that's for the photo shoot. Uh, and my hair looks great also for the photo shoot. And this is my office. And I love that picture because, you know, it was really when I started, you know, being a CEO and, and having to, the first year of being a CEO, I didn't really feel like a CEO. I didn't, there was a lot I didn't know how to do. And since uh, about year one and a half, year two, you know, being able to create and be responsible for a, a company that's viable and being responsible for um, kind of the energy of the team and making sure that the team was working in the right direction and not 
not really leading and not just following, but making sure that the team itself was nurtured and growing and doing well. Um, it's been a really interesting experiment for me to run a company. I've really enjoyed it. And and I've been kind of good at it, which um, which surprised me because I didn't have a lot of experience. So let's uh, let me ask you, what are some things you would do different? Because in this new reality, many journalists are going to end up having to be their own bosses and try to make their way in this difficult time. So what are some things to keep in mind? Uh, you know, of course, you had some, uh, you know, uh, you know, you had some tailwind, right? Including you, you had the, you already had the fame, you had the, you had the savings, but let's just say now, what are some things to think about as a business person? I've always felt that journalists have not been good enough at understanding business for themselves. And uh, we're all learning. This is a year three of my business and I've had so many ups and downs, a lot of it entirely my fault. And so I'd like to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I think that would actually be a great conference when you're wrapping this one up to do another one of like business 101, just bringing people in to the basics of how to run a business. I remember at one point someone being like, quarterly taxes? What are quarterly taxes? I mean, <laughs> as, as silly as that sounds. So this really basic accounting was, uh, I was really lucky my husband's in finance, so he gave me a lot of backup, but we ended up hiring someone to really help us do our budgeting and our accounting. But if it's your money, you really, really need to understand it. And you need to understand how to put people on the line uh, and make sure that you're um, as you're, you know, what what is a fair budget for your work? So that's one piece of it, really just understanding. Um, if someone wants to hire you, what are you worth? What does it, what it cost and how do you do that? I think that's a really important piece of it. And then making sure that you can, I mean, Roland Martin, I'm telling you, you should look at what he does for his show. He does a show, a nightly show it's called Roland Martin Unfiltered, all done in his house. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's got lights and he's done a podcast forever. I mean, he's really, he really is a one man band on that and, and gets very famous people to have conversations with him in his studio all the time. And I think he's just really been a um, an early adapter of this kind of stuff. And, and he gives me a lot of advice just about technology and how to think about setting up stories. Um, mostly... It's about, I think, reputation and networking. So when I talk to students and I talk to people in their first couple of years on the job, it's make sure everybody loves you because more than if you have a bold face name is do people want to work with you. Now, the number of people who I would do a project and say, wow, that was not fun. I would never do that again. And then other people, you're like, wow, that was amazing. And they become the same editor or director <laughs> or whatever that you use over and over and over again because you're like, that person's awesome. That's exactly the kind of person I want to work with. So I think it's a lot about how you um, kind of how you think about working with people and, and making that relationship work because you're basically a for many people you're you know, I'm basically a freelancer I mean I do HBO real sports and I do matter of fact but I'm, I'm really I run a small business and kind of loan myself out um, and so it's about really working with the places that you know and the people that you want to work with figuring out the money thing and figuring out the budget thing I remember my very first budget I had no idea what the, what does it cost to go do a story. You got to know that. What does your time cost? And it's not just what they're willing to offer you. It's, is it going to be something that is worth your doing? And then people will say, Hey, I only have a tiny budget. You know, my, my lawyer once said something like tiny budgets and big budgets are all the same amount of time and energy. <laughs> Stop doing the tiny budgets, work on the big budgets. And there's some truth to that. What do you say no to? I mean, it sounds like a nice problem to have, but it really even some people just asking you to do random things, you know, you have to think about how you monetize your time. You are a business. And then also, if you're online, what's your point of view? I like my Twitter personality because I think that's what people are getting. They're getting me unvarnished and this is my point of view and I can do that. Other people can't. That's not the business that they're running. And so you have to think very carefully about what your point of view is. Uh, online, you know, what are you selling? What are you trying? Who are you trying to be? And I think it's consistent whether you're, you know, new in school or you've been in the business for a while. Um, the good news is the technology is so accessible, right? The I shoot, matter of fact, on my iPhone because wow. I'm holed up in my house, and and because of that, we can keep the show going. We'll get through this, and everybody can come back in, and we can have a show again. And um, you know, I think that's just amazing that I can do it with my my son basically helping me press, you know, record on my iPhone for an emergency in a short amount of time. And we can keep the writers and the directors and everybody still on on staff helping us um, 
because the show continues to go. I think that's really important. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, right there was the start of that conference. We're just to that, <laughs> we're to play that as a keynote, just that video, and uh, they can, the people will benefit. And uh, really, this idea that our time is worth worthy and worthwhile is really important for journalists to understand. And that's what I try to do with my team and my projects. We don't have anybody on staff, but we have a closed circle of really good folks, and we're always looking for more collaborators. And what I say is, if I make money, we all make money, right? That's what we're we're doing. And if you make money, I'd love to get you know some of that uh, work with you to help you make more of that. Like that's that's what we can do. And we have to be very conscious of of, of people's time and their worth and and their effort. It really matters, I think, at, at this time. There's been a question that. Neil's been wanting to ask, how do you follow so many people and not use Twitter lists to filter your timeline? How do you find them? I don't the filter it at all. Isn't that crazy? So I just jump in and it's a great question, but I guess I don't look at it like, hey, I need to have this over here. I like to see what's just randomly coming down the pipe, which of course sometimes means you ruin your mood because you get stuck in a horrible, deadly thread of miserableness. Um, so, so sometimes that happens, but more often, truly, you stumble into somebody telling an amazing story about a date that they went on that went horribly wrong. And I think if I did Twitter lists or if I tried to chunk things, I would miss tripping over those things. In a lot of ways, being a journalist is like that, right? You, you want to make sure when you go cover something and you go in with a sense of like, here's what I think the story get there, you need to be dragged along to be like, oh, actually this is interesting, or this story is interesting, or this over here. You know, you have to go in with a sense of what you might be doing, but be able to turn on a dime and go tell this other interesting story that's now in front of you. And Twitter for me is a little bit like that. I like being surprised. I like finding a, a comedian who's hilarious or a great video or a great, um, or someone who's just remarkable. I, I, I you know, there's a, a woman who's now become a very dear friend of mine who's, who's she's a remarkable um, uh, uh, follow and her, her daughter was uh, killed in the Sandy Hook school shooting. Oh. You know, and, and we just talk all the time on Twitter and she, she often will jump in, even in the COVID conversations and sort of say, as a person who's lost someone, let me give you some advice. As a grieving mom, let me give you my point of view. She's such an uh, amazing voice. Her name is Nelba. And I, I hope you guys get a chance to just look her up and follow her. She's really a remarkable, a remarkable person. Um, I think I worry a filter would, um, would chunk people and maybe I'd lose that. I don't know. I don't know if I, if I, I just kind of like stumbling over things. Have I ever made a gaffe on, on Twitter? Oh my God. Yes. First of all, you know, I can't see anymore. So I can't, I, I spell terribly. I can't spell anything well. And I've realized it's one, you know, I often will tweet in bed in the morning and I can't actually see. Plus, I really can't see because I didn't bring my glasses from my apartment. So I'm here with no glasses at all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I cannot see at all. So I literally tweet like this, like, is this spelled right? <laughs> uh, and often, no, it's not. Uh, so I've sort of given up on my um, horrible, um, my horrible spelling errors. I a funny story on Twitter. Um, my dad used to uh, love. In fact, he hung over my bed a quote uh, that was from Dante. That was the hottest places in hell are reserved for those who, in times of moral crisis, maintain their neutrality. So I posted that. And everyone's like, so you know that's not Dante. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. And and actually, and I was like, oh my God, it's not. And it was very, it actually ended up being pretty funny because we ended up getting, and the woman was just out and out mocking me. And it's unclear, I'll say in my defense. Uh, but we and I ended up saying to her, like, my dad loved that quote, and it was above my my, you know, and then she's like, Oh, and he died. <laughs> so I said, So don't you feel bad now for me, you know? And it, we just ended up having a great conversation. I think when you make a gaffe or a mistake and you're really wrong and you're sorry, then you just need to be sorry, right? You need to be, I, I totally misunderstood you. I really thought you were attacking me. I thought that was Dante and I've not only have, but I posted on Twitter, I have been using it in commencement speeches. 
<laughs> all the people who've graduated over the last 10 years, that may or may not be Dante just <laughs> saying. Um, so I don't know. I, I guess I see the humor in that. And and I think I think Twitter's about authenticity and sort of saying like, oh, I screwed that up. So sorry. Here's what I was thinking. Here's yeah. let me give you the background, the backstory. Uh, I think that's always kind of interesting. Uh, we found Nelba's Twitter handle. It's Nelba underscore MG. Thank you, oh, Hilda, in, yeah. in Florida. Thank you for doing that. And by the way, one of my favorite things on the internet is a picture of Abraham Lincoln saying, I didn't say half the stuff people say <laughs> I said on the internet. You know? <laughs> and that captures a problem in yes. a beautiful way. Yes. Oh, there's uh, Nelba's Twitter handle, which is yes. great. great. Yep. Yeah. And so we only have a few minutes left with you, so we want to I know you're going to have dinner and your family time. It's so important that schedule. Actually, drinks. I go straight to drinks right about <laughs> now, and I feel that I, along with every person who is able to, uh, around this time, it's like you know what? The time is all right to have a cocktail. I think that's yeah. true. Uh, you know, we would be right if you were closing out our conference. We would. You'd give the keynote, and we'd go and have cocktail. Walk to the bar. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, so uh, just we're, there are several comments and questions that are coming in. So we're going to tight questions and tight answers. Uh, where, what is your best case scenario for how we emerge from this? And what is your worst case scenario? Best case scenario is that all the predictions are way off and that somehow we're able to flatten the curve and that people very quickly get back to work. I do not think it's going to be by... Um, by uh, Easter, I don't think any uh, epidemiologist agrees with that or any any reliable doctor who's not got a political agenda agrees to that. And I hope that people are able to um, self-isolate and really just stay out of harm's way and that, you know, that they're able to get ventilators and all the stuff that they need to the places that need it the most and the rest of us. I tell my boys all the time, like, you can't break a leg right now. You know, it's not just about coronavirus. You you cannot overwhelm the medical system. Please, I'm begging you, do not, you know, get injured. So I think that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is I think the charts that we see, right? I think Fauci has made the worst case scenario pretty clear. I think Andrew Cuomo in New York has been laying out what he worries about, 40,000 ventilators. The worst case scenario is what some hospitals have said they're going to do, which is, and they did in Italy, you know, we don't have enough ventilators. If you're 80, we're going to calculate that you're probably not going to live. So we're not going to give it to you. We're going to find someone young and someone who doesn't have an underlying uh, illness. And we're going to pick them. Oh, that's, that's it's awesome. a horrific thing to even think about. Oh, this artwork behind me. That's another question. So you can tell, I, you can see that this the, some of the stuff is still on the corners. Um, we're, we set this up in our studio for our uh, for matter of fact. So we've been moving in things. This is actually artwork I got in Cuba the other day. And um, it's a Cuban artist. I can't remember his name. But, you know, because uh, the U.S. government no longer allows cruise ships really to stop in Cuba, um, the artists are 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 dying. I mean, it's, it's a disaster for them. And it was actually really sad. I went into this big... There's this big um, multi-floor, kind of like a storage facility kind of thing, but it's massive. And and there's, it's full of artists who are beautiful artists. I mean, this is a picture you can't really tell because my head's in the way, but it's an elephant. And for Cubans, he said, you know, I think of Cubans as elephants. We just try to keep going through all the crises and just keep marching on and and try not to stop. We just, you know, keep, keep stepping and keep stepping. Um, He's starving, you know. He he. There's nobody coming in to buy their art, and so when I go to Cuba, I try to purchase art from um, from vendors and 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 try to you know spread some money around because people really need it. It's a beautiful, you know. It's not really well shot by me on my son's laptop, but it's actually a very beautiful piece of uh, of art. No, it was good enough that somebody asked and they noticed. And yeah. this is what the beauty of the internet is, right? I'll pop, I'll, I'll, I'll pop a picture of it on uh, on Twitter and yeah. Instagram and, and tell you the artist's name. I just, at this moment, I'm just totally forgetting him. That, that's fine. I, I was just going to say that this is the beauty of the internet, right? You you If we had done this in a boring conference room, you speak. But now we get that. And now we hear about the plight of the Cuban artist, which I've not heard about at all. I've not had a chance to think about it. It's right? a great Everything story. Um, yeah, we did a piece for a matter of fact on it. The number of Cuba, all the Cuban businesses are drying up pre-coronavirus because, you know, the U.S. will not allow cruise ships that dock in Cuba to come to the United States. So they're choosing then not to go to Cuba, which means all the tourists 
tourism is way down, way before coronavirus, obviously. And so, yeah, it's a huge, it's really sad, very sad. You know, my mom was Cuban, so I spent a lot of time in Cuba. And uh, it just breaks your heart to see them struggle constantly. I want to welcome a newcomer to uh, Social Media Weekend. She bought a ticket today so that she could listen to you and then go back and walk, watch all the recordings. Christine Del Bello is here. And she says, did anybody catch the name of the female national security experts that you recommended? So you- Oh gosh, I had a bunch, you know, I really, I wish- Yeah, let me just look at your phone for a second, no problem. Uh, we, can, we can pull up that. I'll just also say that Hilda says interesting analogy because Cubans consider elephants good luck, which is cool. And folks- Is that right? Yeah. You know that. Yeah. And folks, your friends can join us. They can buy a ticket at, at socialmediaweekend.com, smwkand.com, and then we'll add them to the group. And then they can join us for these office learning hours. All of this stuff is all included. And uh, that's great. And uh, also, uh, there's a question here if your production company commissions outside documentaries. Yeah, we do all the time actually uh, and we're always looking for producers i mean we bring them on for projects and so at this moment everything is kind of shut down because there's no I mean, we're not really shooting we are shooting this one documentary in seattle looking at what's unfolding in seattle right now with camera people who are there that was already in process when and it was about public health uh located in seattle when uh, coronavirus hit so we've been kind of working on that story um, so generally, yes, at this moment, no, but we'd love to hear from people who both have good ideas and interesting pitches that maybe we can collaborate on or who say, listen, I, I have a doc that, I'm, that I, I'd love to shoot or I'd be great at shooting your doc. You know, yeah, we, we'd love to, to bring people in. And, and again, I, we have a rule that you just have to be a great person, hardworking and fun and kind. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, it's just, do you want to go work with people? want to work with you. That's awesome. Come Rose says she's going to look ladies. for uh, women defense experts for our women to follow list. And uh, that's that's really cool. And Maria has posted a link to your Cuban documentary about the travel restrictions. And, uh, oh, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Pradnia has just joined us. She says, sorry to be late. No problem, because you can rewatch really? the video. The end. What? <laughs> But this is also okay. the thing about this, right? Like again, if we were covered. <laughs> but if you imagine if we were in a conference room, you know, after the conference is over, it's like the conference is gone, right? Now they can easily they can replay it at the second, and they can, and, and people can watch it. So before you go, um, I'm going to give you a chance to give some final thoughts, and then we're going to put you solo on screen and also two shot with me. And we're going to tell people to take a selfie because we would have done a selfie together at Social Media <laughs> Weekend. So everybody get ready, pull out your phones and take a selfie with Soledad and me. We'll both wave and uh, and then let's post them. How do I take a selfie of us taking a selfie? Oh yeah, that'd be okay here. I'll take a selfie. Okay, let's do that. You, uh, yeah, there you go. Turn around and let's see. I've got to can... be half turned. Okay. okay. I think we're doing it. Okay, can you see me? I can see you in the camera, in nice. the screen. Nice. We're That's good. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. So people, please post it, tag it SMW Candy, uh, tag Soledad. And I just want to thank her and give her a chance to give us some final thoughts, leave us with some uh, you know, wisdom as you have already, but also if you wouldn't mind some optimism and things oh, to yeah. think about as we go into you know, what could be a long haul for many people. Yes, there's no question. I think it is going to be a long haul, but I'll tell you, Whenever I go to the grocery store, and I try to do it infrequently, there's always these people working, right? And stocking and working, and they're on the front lines in a lot of ways. And I just, every single story I've ever covered, people step up. They just do, they just step up. And and they're not gonna get a ton of money, and they're not gonna be wildly rewarded, right? They'll probably, they'll get paid, and many people are doing it to keep a paycheck. But, but many, many more feel like, if they don't show up, people don't get food. And if people don't get food, they start to panic. It's it's always remarkable to me in every story I've ever covered how many people just show up and do the job. And reporters too, there are so many reporters. Someone was actually um, sending that message about uh, Shamari Stone, who I, I highlighted uh, kind of how he thinks about setting up a live shot or setting up an interview shot. Um, a lot of reporters who are out there and 
And they're not the, I make $5 million a year reporters. They're working reporters who are trying to just get the story and inform people. I try to run around and just tell people to make sure that we can send it to them. Um, friends I know who now are out of work um, or just need a little help. Uh, the other day, someone um, sent a message that she was looking for a bike. And I'm like, oh, I got four kids. You know I have a bike in my basement for your kid. Uh, I think that's the time we're at. How do you help people? So I, I'm always inspired by people and human beings do good things. Politicians, I think, often are, suck sometimes. But, but human beings actually tend to stick their necks out. Um, and help each other and figure things out. And I think, um, I hope we can hold on to it. I saw it after 9-11, I saw it after Hurricane Katrina, I saw it after the, the Asian tsunami. I, every every single story I've covered, you see it. So I, I have no reason to doubt that that same thing is gonna happen. That's, uh, that's a great moment and a great way to think about where we're headed. Uh, folks, this is Soledad O'Brien, I can't believe we got her. Uh, to spend this time with us at the end of a very for long week. She works so hard. And uh, the, I mean, apart from the journalism, the, what you're, the care you're showing for your staff is really inspiring. And thank you for that. And thank you for being a presence in our lives for so many years and many more to come. And you've mastered this new technology, which gives a lot of us hope who think that there's only one way in which the world can be and the old ways are changing. You you saw some newspapers have already gone under just in the last two weeks because of the last two weeks. And uh, one of them uh, reported on their on their final issue in yes. their final issue. It was just so sad to watch. Your, yeah. It breaks your heart. Yeah. yeah, it's a tough time. So I do hope people can pull together and that we come out of it really thinking what what should we save from this? You know, and, and then how do we think about working together and making things better for people? Yeah. And uh, she's Soledad O'Brien, at Soledad O'Brien. Check out Matter of Fact TV. And uh, thank you, Soledad. We'll see you again. It was a pleasure. And, nice to see you. Thanks for having me. And good luck with everything wonderful and engaging program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, folks, that was Soledad. And we're just so glad that she could be with us. And thank you for watching. Uh, let me just give you a little housekeeping while she gets to exit from there. And uh, so here we are. It's the Friday after social media weekend. It's been a long week and a long few days. Some of you who are watching the recording from Italy and places like that, you've been in lockdown for a month or longer for people in, in Asia watching. Uh, my heart goes out to all of you and to everyone who's been uh, who's suffering. Uh, my I lost a dear friend this week. Uh, Floyd Cardo is the celebrity chef. He had a wonderful obit in the New York Times. He was an ugly delicious. He won Top Chef Masters. Uh, Floyd died. Uh, he founded uh, Danny Meyer's multiple restaurants, including Tabla, Bread Bar, and then he did Pawala in Mumbai. He went home and did an amazing uh, restaurant there called Bombay Canteen, and uh, he was just 59. And so, you know, everybody who has had family uh, suffer. Uh, one of my students, a former students who is a reporter, is now ill. Uh, I'm thinking about all of them. I'm also thinking about all of you and where we go with our careers, where we go with work. Um, I lost a client today who just can't afford to pay what they've already agreed to, the contract that they have. It's not their fault, right? This is the moment where we are. We want to pull together. We want to do things together. And I want, I want to help you. So please be in touch. Email me. Uh, we're, we're all trying to decide what's going to happen. Um, uh, we may not get to decide, but we can certainly participate and uh, help set some of what is going to happen. So a couple of thoughts before we go. Number one, I asked you in my opening keynote, if you haven't watched it yet, you can go back and watch it. And I said, work on something. Please work on something, whether it's an analog project or a digital project. This is your opportunity. People like me and others want to help you. You can fumble, you can stumble, it doesn't matter. Uh, whether you want to uh, write a song and get it broadcast, you want to start a podcast, you want to learn StreamYard, we are here to help you. This social media weekend community, all of them are special, but this particular one, because we met at the most difficult of times, we're going to be really close and really strong together. So please join us as we share our tips in the group office hours right here in the social media weekend group every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Please join us Eastern time 
always say the uh, the uh, time zone uh, and and don't forget to use the LinkedIn group. I forced all of us to be in the LinkedIn group instead of the safe confines of the uh, of the of the Facebook group because I want us to be better at LinkedIn. All of us need to be better. So please go to the LinkedIn group. Introduce yourself. You can start a post there. You cannot start a post here. We have uh, used our uh, our uh, administrator privileges to do that. So I, I really want you to think about um, uh, participating more in the LinkedIn group. Uh, and so join us for our uh, for our 5 p.m. Eastern Wednesday office hours. Next, uh, I started the weekly, sorry, the daily COVID calls for me uh, because I need it. It's uplifting for me. And so many people have posted how it's uplifting for them. One of you said it's a lifeline. And I can't tell you how much that has meant for me and the guests who have joined to hear comments like that. And I will be here doing this every single day until this is over or until I get sick. And uh, I know that the people around the world want to help and want to participate. And just as an example of why you should do things, even if you don't know where they're going, the New York Times read along. You're going to join us, I hope, 8.30 a.m. Eastern every single Sunday. Uh, Neil Parik is the executive producer. We have two fabulous 13-year-olds on the show who are going to be talking about their podcast and helping us read the kids section of the New York Times. So please join us Sunday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, recorded and available on all our platforms as wide as possible. It's not closed. And in that conversation, we're also going to talk about COVID. We're going to talk about what we've learned. We're going to talk about where things are in the world. Uh, it started as just a lark for me to learn Facebook Live and look where it's gone. And look, we now have sponsors and I can uh, I can help share some of the money that we're getting to support this. And this is a, uh, a tribute to our producers, Paula, Steve, uh, Julia, Neil, for jumping in and saying, if you won't do something for zero dollars and no, you know, no business side, if you won't be willing to do that as a passion project, if you won't be willing to do that, I believe you won't be able to do it for all the money in the world and all the business help in the world and all the money in the world. So uh, that's what the New York Times read along has become. And now the COVID calls, uh, you know, I, I already announced we're doing two this weekend, Saturday at 4 p.m. Rose Horowitz is going to co-host with me Women to Follow. Please join us for that. And then Saturday, a uh, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern is the, pro, uh, the positivity episode. So I can tell you, I'm sort of announcing for the first time that uh, WBAI asked me to do a radio show out of this. And so Saturday, noon to two, uh, every Saturday, I'm going to host my own uh, show. It's called Coping with COVID, a helpful, hopeful show. So I hope you will watch wherever you are, WBAI.org, or you can call in and it's an old fashioned radio program that I can do from my house. All of that because of you, all of that because of this community. So I'm super grateful. A TV station in India, the largest network, is going to have me host an India-flavored COVID call show uh, uh, for their network. Um, we had 187,000 people watch today's morning program because of collaborations we built. This is what this moment is, folks, for all of us. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot to learn. Support our families. And I'm honored that you would support us by being here for Social Media Weekend. We're going to do one big group session again, uh, uh, conversation with the heads of social for the International Red Cross, UN peacekeeping. We're going to learn all the new things that are happening. Uh, we'll get, get somebody from WHO to join us in our big group. The, the head of social media for uh, WHO is there. So you will love meeting her. And then in um, May, we're going to do a whole workshop on analytics. You're going to love that and you're going to learn so much. That was a session that was going to be in the IRL and now uh, now is in the online conference. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful to everybody for being here. Uh, uh, buy a ticket to Social Media Weekend for someone who can use it. That's right. And you know the recordings are just $49, $49. And the extended learning and the recording is just $99. Three months of learning, a lifetime of learning. I am here. My team of Neil, Linda, 
uh, Andrew, Rajni, Shristi, everybody who participated and spoke. I'm just so grateful. My heart is full at a very difficult time. And I want to thank you all for that. And thank you for Social Media Weekend. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to ask our friend Neil to come on uh, to get us out of here. Uh, I know he was in a virtual happy hour for work at the same time. Uh, Neil, how are you feeling? How did that go in from your side? Uh, I'm I'm doing well. It was it was important for me to do that. Um, you know, as much as I wanted to be with you and and be with everyone from Social Media Weekend, so I tried multitasking. It worked a little bit. Sometimes it was challenging. Um, but one thing I do want to call out, Shri, and and I sent you a WhatsApp message on this as well. Um, you made a reference to doing these calls uh, until you get sick. Um, mm -hmm. That's not allowed. Okay. Uh, and and you know, I'm going to say. Let's be real for a moment. We're all going to know people who are going to get sick at some point, um, particularly with our networks. Uh, you've you've known someone obviously who passed away, and again, my deepest condolences for that. Um, I think that uh, the only thing that we can do is do our best to support each other and make sure that you know we can build these connections when we are isolated and we are, um, you know dealing with with family and work and, and everything like that. So as far as getting sick is concerned, uh, certainly, you know, we what I'm going to say, Shri, is any of us will get sick at some point. I, I, it'll be it, it, our social media weekend family. At some point, somebody in our group might get sick. But don't say the word, Shri. <laughs> Please don't. Say, that's what you can't do. You can't say until I get sick. Oh. That doesn't uh, that doesn't work. Um, I'm looking forward to next. I guess we committed to next week's office hours being on StreamYard, uh, so I will uh, uh, work around that. Um, the WBAI show sounds really great. Um, if you can share some of those details again, if you can make a banner. Yeah. Um, but and, for now, uh, Saturday, just because if you're watching live now, Saturday noon to two, WBAI. It will be recorded and available. But uh, WBAI, that's. Uh, 99.5 FM in New York, but on the internet, WBAI.org. Thank you, guys and gals and that's, everybody. That's great. Um, so I can just put that on the screen. There for you go. <laughs> want to read it. Um, and uh, with that, you know, thank you for joining us uh, for this this first follow-up session from Social Media Weekend. And we do have a few others uh, planned. And uh, again, uh, continue to comment in the group. And, and I'm going to join the LinkedIn group as well and be a little more active there. Um, because we need to, uh, I almost made myself cry. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's uh, that's going to go around. But uh, everyone take care of yourself. Um, and uh, Rose is saying, does it start tomorrow? It does. Uh, so please uh, uh, join us. Uh, and thank you that um, it was an important message. Let's close with this, Shri. Um, everyone needs to, to uh, follow this. Stay home. Uh, don't go back to work. Don't go out if you don't have to. Um, you know, do what you know you you have to do. Don't listen to folks who are telling you otherwise. Uh, we're not gonna get better that way. That's all I got. Thank okay. you, everyone. Uh, be well. Thank bye you, bye. everybody. Love to the social media weekend.